Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Shea. I'm the acquiring editor for World Language Textbooks at Yale University Press. And um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming. It's been a great event so far. Uh, before I talk about what we're trying to do to uh, update the materials, keep French in action going, um, there are just some people who asked that I extend uh, their good wishes to Pierre and extend their disappointment that they couldn't be here for various reasons. Um, several members of the staff at uh, WGBH and uh, Annenberg Media couldn't make it and, and wanted to extend their good wishes to Pierre. Maria Kaczynski, who actually will be here tonight at the banquet, was extremely upset that she couldn't be here for today's festivities and wanted to, me to let everyone know that. Uh, Mary Coleman, who in the 90s worked for about 10 years promoting French in Action and probably worked with many of you, also had another engagement. And I have a letter to Pierre from the chairman of the board of the Chicago Bears, Michael McCaskey. And it says, uh, this I guess shows you the reach of French in Action. Uh, Dear Pierre, congratulations to you and the entire crew who created French in Action 25 years ago. What you accomplished is nothing short of astonishing. So many students and adult learners have learned to speak French with facility thanks to your pioneering efforts. In the 1960s, before there was FRA, I struggled through many hours in the language lab at Yale. The materials then were boring, sleep-inducing, and not interactive. Years later, still wanting to improve my French, I was thrilled to discover FIA. And this weekend, he's actually in Paris, as he says, using the skills he, he gained from French in action. So he's uh, very sorry he couldn't be here, but very happy for Pierre. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about was the um, textbooks, workbooks, an audio program of French in Action, which is what Yale University Press has been fortunate enough to publish for the past 23 years. And French in Action, I don't know if it's still unique in this regard, but it's certainly unique amongst all the, the uh, products I've dealt with, is that, as I've heard Pierre say before, with French in Action, the French in Action video is the course, the textbook is just supplementary. So. Me, as, as the, we're not the publisher of the video. So as the publisher of the textbook, workbook, and audio program, our challenge is what can we do to um, improve the materials that exist to support the French in Action video and help professors like yourself keep using French in Action? Um, because if I could, if I had to in one sentence say what I've heard from many, many French professors out there who are familiar enough with French in Action to know how effective it is, is they say things like, French in Action is the best method there is, but I can't use it for various reasons. That might be that the copyright on the textbook is 1994. Um, there, there are more members of their staff that aren't familiar with it, and they get voted down, and it gets pushed out of their curriculum. And you know, as with any program that's been around for a long time, French in Action use is dwindling, and so my um, goal is to increase its use. And I'm, this is sure, I'm sure this is something that Yale University Press should have done a long time ago. Um, and there are probably a number of reasons why. The main one probably is that <clears throat> because the, the video is so comprehensive and so much the focal point of the course, there hasn't been the um, ability, and there isn't today, the ability to to update the video or to new do, vi do a new video, if that would even be desirable. So, um, but what I do want to do is do whatever we can to improve the materials around the video with input from all of you and um, keep French action going as long as we can for all the p teachers who, who know how effective it is. So in March of this year, I did an online survey of, this went out only to French in action users, we'll call them, meaning professors either who use it now and high school teachers and middle school teachers, or those who have used it in the past, but people who are in our database as users. And I was looking for information about their use, their thoughts on um, using it today in their classrooms. And so I got um, a lot of tremendous feedback, a lot of it from some people in this room. And I just want to read you a couple of the, uh, the comments, which I think were typical. Um, some of them you may not agree with, but of course, that's fine. Um, one person said, the reason for dropping French in Action from their curriculum, 
We wanted something that had internet, online support, as well as the book, workbook and videos, and the workbook and videos are not as up to date as they might be. Um, another person said, we learned to deal with the obviously out of date elements, currency and prices, telephones, etc., the somewhat old fashioned style of some of the dialogue and such things as tobacco and alcohol that probably wouldn't appear in a more modern textbook. Um, someone else said, we used French in action for 20 years. I learned French with it, I love it. Sadly, two new teachers dropped it, probably because it was old. That was a terrible mistake. What they are using now, insert the name of another textbook, is junk. Um, if it is not updated soon, we will stop using it after 22 years, followed by three exclamation points. Um, so some of the, I also asked people, what is it that we could update that would make it more likely for you to either keep using it or perhaps go back to it if your school has been forced to drop it? Um, some people said, I used French in Action for nearly 10 years. I dropped it because it was too Franco-centric. And this is just as important. It wasn't up to date with online material. Um, someone else said, similar comment, <clears throat> you need way more about the rest of the Francophone world. French in Action is notoriously Franco-centric, and that's a problem. <clears throat> someone said, multiculturalism is a high priority. And by the way, I'm going to open up to, to the floor in a few minutes after I finish talking because I want to hear from all of you what, what you, your thoughts are on what we can do to help improve the, uh, the existing materials. Um, so kind of the consensus, so, so I haven't talked yet about what we're trying to do. We're, we're updating the textbook and the workbook with, with new editions of them. Um, so far, what we've got going into them are references which will make current um, Things like currency, telecommunication, the internet, eliminating out-of-date occupations and adding newer occupations, more multiculturalism, um, some more about the Francophone world. That's obviously a touchy subject, so that's something that we're going to uh, be discussing before we, you know, before Pierre decides what we're going to do with that. Um, changes to the city of Paris in the 21st century, um, adding more online materials, um, another a uh, touchy subject, which I guess kind of goes against the grain of uh, French in action, is um, more written grammar exercises, which was, I'm not saying we're doing that, that was something that's requested. Um, so where can we do these things? Um, I think probably the, in, the, in terms of the books, the easiest place to update is the document section, because they're not so strictly tied to the lessons in the video. Um, we can also add new exercises to the workbook, and we can um, add more online material. And as far as you know, adding any online material or electronic uh, resources, I want to assure you, given the uh, technical difficulties we had this morning, that I'm the acquiring editor and I'm not the multimedia producer, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, so, oh, another thing which um, was Pierre's idea, which he's working on, and this is something that he plans on including in both the new textbook and French in Interaction is uh, something he's calling the Marie Law Diary, which um, he could tell you about for a minute, what it would entail. Well, it will, we have discovered a Marie Law's uh, diary, uh, which she has been writing since uh, she was 10 uh, until now. So uh, going through it, we find some little, uh, topics which uh, have to, things to do with what we're talking in a given lesson, but uh, which was written at a much later date, so that we, uh, we quote that we got permission from Marie-Law to quote some passages from her diary, and we'll select some of those passages and include them and reproduce them. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to open it up to the floor now. Uh, one of the things that I'd, I'd like to you to address, if anyone has any thoughts on it, is um, I'm curious if any of your schools that you teach at are using a main, let's say you're using French in action or you're not using French in action, but if any of your other languages, if you're using a main level text, 
uh, for beginning course that is strictly electronic, that has no paper, um, workbook, textbook, anything. If it's just an online or an electronic program, I'm interested to know if anyone has that. Um, another thing which I want to discuss with you, either one-on-one -on -one or you can bring it up now or email me, it doesn't matter, is we're going to be looking for some assistance. I've already talked to a few people about this. If anyone wants to help contribute to the content of the new textbook and workbook, uh, cultural information, uh, different things that might go into the documents or ancillary materials for online. Uh, some of you have um, built up you know, virtual, practically libraries of supplementary materials that you've been using for many years with French in Action. Um, if anybody wants to talk to me about you know, possibly working with that, that would be great. But um, I'm interested to know, as I said, about the electronic question of any fully electronic textbooks and just what it is that you would like to see happen with the materials that are French in Action other than the video. And Brian has the microphone if anyone wants to contribute anything. So any comments about the future of the, the uh, non-video materials first? We'll, we'll have a general discussion about the future of French in Action in general, but um, uh, in terms of Tim's points for the, uh, for the text materials in particular. Yes? Hi, I haven't, um, I haven't thought this through very much, but, I've, but we're talking a lot about how we teach. Um, I've been using French in Action for 23 years and in a high school level. And I wonder if uh, we loved it when the 1994 version broke it down into two, you know, le cahier bleu et le cahier rouge. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way to break it down even further into, into three books. Because I think w the documents are so wonderful, that, and, and it's always a question of time. And, you know, is there a way to use, um, at our level, is, would there be a way to use French in action a little differently and not be, not ask kids to buy a book that they're only going to use half of, for example. Um, so I don't know if you've thought about that, breaking it down or into four books or something like right. that so that we can use, you know, we never got to lesson 52, um, but we certainly in two years we got to the late 40s and now we, we aim for lesson 25. Um, I love the idea that there's going to be updating of the document because I think they're really rich and there's lots of potential and opportunity with those, with, with everything. But that, that's an easy way to supplement. I mean, Robert could have visited places in the Francophone world with his wealthy family, and uh, Mireille could dream about things. And it's exciting to hear about the Journal de Marie-Laure, too. So there are all kinds of ways to be creative, I think, but um, possibly not limiting us to, to two books. Right. I think that's a, a great point. Um, my understanding has always been that, generally speaking, um, when colleges use French in Action, it's a two-year program, and high schools go at about half the pace, making it a four-year program, which is what you're referring to. Um, I think it's definitely, is that not the case? Okay. So you did it in two years, but do you have a semester system? So that you'd want four books for? Okay. Okay. I mean, breaking it down is definitely a viable option. And I think it would, before we did it, we would just want to get more feedback. I would do another survey of, for example, all the high school teachers. I'm not sure if any college teachers want to comment on that, if there'd be any colleges that you think would want it broken down more than in part one and part two. I'd be interested to know that too. Other comments about the non-video materials? Uh, I'm getting a little feedback here. Because uh, we want to talk about uh, you know, the, the future of, of, of French in action in general, you know, how to continue this. This is the 25th anniversary. How do we continue it on into the 21st century? So um, your, your, uh, your input is what's going to be necessary for the, uh, you know, to, to uh, continue the success of this program, since I mean, you have made it a success. Since language is living and evolving, I think it would be helpful if there could be some way to um, isolate expressions that are somewhat outdated and maybe offer more um, 
not necessarily unacceptable, because <laughs> modern expressions often are, but um, just sort of an update so that to answer those people who think that French in action is outdated. Are you referring to the expressions, obviously, in the video? Right. So you're saying maybe in the workbook or the textbook, where they're not identified currently, identify them and, and use it as something that can be taught about explaining them more because they're harder to understand now? Is that what? Well, the point? No, just because they're somewhat outdated, they're not used anymore. Okay. I mean, like, mystère et boule de gomme, is, nobody uses that anymore. Um, I'm sure there are other examples. I've taught with French assistants who say, oh, we'd never say that. Now, I think, by and large, yes, indeed, French in Action's great um, success is that it is very authentic, but it's those little places that aren't so modern that if it, those of us who don't get to go to France all the time, if we knew that reliably there are some expressions that really wouldn't be used if we could know what they are and what would be used in place of those. Well, it might, might be good if you could make a list of those expressions which you find a, a, a little bit too old. You know, I was suggested here uh, we could replace Zut by putain de merde. In the back. Hi, I, I don't think you should replace anything in French in action because, you know, if, if you start replacing uh, Mystère et Paul de Gomme et uh, Zut with uh, the, you know, uh, vulgar putain et merde, it's just going to become, uh, you know, more like the United States, which is the most degenerate culture in the world, and <laughs> it's just going to degenerate because, you know, for me, I just learned French just uh, as a lark by uh, watching French in action. It, you know, it's, it's an idealized uh, uh, world, and... Um, I just think that there should be some standards, you know, and uh, French in Action sets a standard. There is, you know, culture, you know, stands above, uh, 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 but I forgot what I was going to say. But uh, let me ask one more thing, and that is, uh, how do you think that the internet has changed uh, language learning? Because, uh, like I said, when I, when I learned French, it was with French in Action in the early 90s, and uh, the only... Uh, uh, access I had was with French videotapes and French in action, but now I have uh, streaming audio on the internet, and that's really changed the way that, uh, for me, in my opinion, uh, you can have a whole immersion just by listening to uh, internet streaming audio, and it's free, and uh, <laughs> thank you. For, thank you. That's all I have to say. Euh, je peux prendre la parole une seconde euh, Oui. Euh, en ce qui concerne la, comment dire, la mise à jour linguistique, le fait de remplacer des expressions plus ou moins datées par euh, d'autres qui seraient euh, euh, à la mode, etc. Le problème, c'est que cette langue-là aussi, elle est extrêmement évolutive. Et ce qu'on va dire aujourd'hui... Euh, Bon, moi, je vis en France, je ne suis pas sûre déjà de tout comprendre de ce que j'entends dire autour de moi euh, dans le milieu étudiant, euh, lycéen, etc. Euh, ce n'est pas la langue d'Agrippine, mais enfin, quasiment. Et Alors, bon, on s'adapte. Et puis après, de toute façon, ce... je dirais que quand moi, je commence à employer une expression, c'est probablement qu'elle est déjà aux poubelles de l'histoire. Et donc, c'est... Enfin, J'allais dire, à ce moment-là, c'est un travail sans fin, parce qu'on va, on va remplacer Zut par quelque chose, et puis, et puis ce quelque chose, dans cinq ans, sera jugé complètement ringard par la, la nouvelle génération qui fait la langue, etc. Donc, euh, enfin, moi, je rejoins assez monsieur qui, qui dit que... Qu'après tout, le, une méthode doit effectivement cette standard. Il y a quand même quelque chose du, du modèle linguistique, ce qui n'empêche pas d'introduire des variantes, mais 
Et en ce sens, je n'ai pas l'impression que, que la langue de French in Action soit datée. Bon, il y a peut-être des choses qu'on... Qu c'est vrai, bon, mystère et boule de gomme, c'est une expression qu'on n'entend pas tous les jours dans la rue, mais euh, c'est quand même une expression qui a sa place dans la langue et qui... Bon, ça peut... Je pense aussi que c'est ça la richesse de la langue, c'est d'avoir de, des, des trouvailles. Et puis, euh, quelqu'un parlait ce matin d'une secte euh, que les, ceux qui enseignent French in Action se reconnaissent, euh, je ne sais pas, à, à la jupe rouge ou autre. Et, mais peut-être aussi à ces expressions-là, comme euh, c'est comme enfin, ce qui fait aussi la, la richesse de la langue d'un écrivain, c'est d'avoir des, des espèces d'idiosyncratismes qui deviennent euh, des, des clés alors effectivement, après on se reconnaît, on se retrouve dans ses clés. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I know we're not supposed to talk about the video, but talking about French interaction, they were adding more modern videos, right? For the examples of like bonjour, and they show uh, more modern videos. And if they're going to do that for French interaction, you know, why not put those on the original videos, you know, adjust those original videos without changing the storyline. I think the storyline pretty much should stay the same. It's pretty much, like he said, an idealized world in Paris, uh, focusing on Paris and then uh, as far as the text goes. But as far as the workbook goes for Yale Press, if I were to see something different from the last edition, would, would, would you, an improvement would be maybe more more cartoons and pictures, make it more, a little, a little more livelier. And then, you know, when I actually learned French from French in Action, so I was always jumping from the workbook to the study guide, you know. It would be nice to take both and maybe blend them together, you know, have the information there, right, you know, because I was always going back to, from one chapter to another um, in there. And lastly, It would be great, um, just with technology now, with the audio and the exercises, there's so many things online now where you have, you know, you, you, you listen to the audio and, and if there's a way with, you know, if you buy the workbook, then you can have access to like an online version that gives you the answers maybe, so you don't have to go to the back of the workbook to get the answers and maybe blends the audio online, you know, so you're not having to put in a CD or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like a Kia workbook? Have you ever, Kia, you heard of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I just wanted to clarify, I would never, ever want to touch French in Action's original recording. It's sacrosaint. <laughs> I just thought, given the comments that I've had from assistants, assistants that I've worked with, um, maybe there could be a forum or something something sort of live where you could type in an expression and ask if there was a, maybe a more modern equivalent or something. But I'm in total agreement with you. I love the traditional roots of French in action. I wouldn't change that, but it'd be nice to have some way to access what might be a little more modern, maybe through a forum. Okay. Um, just picking up on There's now been a couple of suggestions of having some type of uh, online um, exercise uh, compendium. Uh, the Kia was mentioned. Um, speaking as someone who um, does use in a more advanced course uh, a, a grammar book with a Kia adjunct and who's seen her son go through a high school program with a Kia adjunct, um, you know what? The only thing that makes Kia any better than an old-fashioned, and I mean grammar translation method, um, is the fact that it's electronic. And you know what? Um, after about five minutes, our students wise up to that. Um, I think maybe some type of, I like the idea of, of a forum where teachers can share their ideas. But frankly, um, when someone says, we need more ancillaries, all I'm hearing really is, you know what? I am so overworked, I don't have time. Um, And I think French in Action really does have so much in it already. Um, if you have 17 students, no, you don't have to have 17 questions. If your questions are well enough devised, the same question can be answered differently by all 17 students. 
So I think there are other ways of simplifying our task as faculty members or as teachers rather than farming out all the creativity and expecting someone is going to do this all for us. Uh, mine just goes along with uh, re uh, changing the video. I think that the video should definitely stay the same and like everyone agrees. But more importantly, just because um, and just going along with why we should also keep French in action in the classroom, you know, we wouldn't change a piece of literature um, just because time has changed and we wouldn't stop reading a piece of literature just because we've moved on in a different piece of time. And I really see French in action as, you know, a piece of art also and a piece of literature that these kids can learn about, you know, what, what life was like then and, and I think as a workbook um, component. We could always have like text box in the workbook that give, um, you know, expressions from today that, or we could ask them, you know, and, and the forum I think is also a great idea. So just things to add in the workbook, you know, there could even just be like a text box like, et aujourd'hui, qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu dit? And I think that that could be a really great supplement to help um, students um, compare to what it once was and, and what it is today. Euh, je veux dire ça en français. Euh, si vous essayez de tout changer, évidemment, if you, like, I mean, if you like to change everything in the book, you're going to have to ask yourself, little girls who are 10 years old in France now, what would they sound like? Alors, je prends un exemple. Très. Il n'existe plus rien en France qui est très joli, très gentil, très beau, dans le vocabulaire d'une petite fille de 10 ans. Maintenant, c'est trop. Trop beau, c'est trop bon, ah, c'est trop génial. Ça, c'est ma petite nièce qui parle comme ça. Mais je peux vous assurer que dans cinq ans, ça va changer. Ça sera quoi Je ne sais pas. Mais alors, si on doit écrire un livre à chaque fois, on n'a pas fini. Hein. Alors, alors, oui, euh, la remarque que j'ai, ce n'est pas vraiment de changer la vidéo. Euh, ni le texte lui-même, mais je pense que euh, c'est aussi une question de changer la façon de communiquer l'approche elle-même aux nouveaux enseignants. Je pense que beaucoup d'écoles, de, beaucoup d'enseignants euh, ne vont pas utiliser French in Action tout simplement parce qu'on ne sait pas exactement comment le faire. Alors, je regrette le fait qu'on ne publie plus le, le Teacher's Guide, si vous voulez, euh, le titre, le, le livre du professeur, qui en fait est une base de connaissances très importante pour le nouvel enseignant. Donc, on devrait savoir comment approcher, comment euh, comment introduire cette méthode. Je pense que ça ça, ça, ça pose un problème à plusieurs d'entre nous qui commençons à enseigner avec cette méthode. On ne sait pas comment le faire. Donc, euh, je vois ça en tant que formateur d'enseignants, je crois que c'est une chose très importante de publier quelque chose qui montre comment cette méthode doit se faire. Et je pense que c'est là où on rate un peu euh, euh, les objectifs à signer à French in Action. Oh. Uh, Tim, I think this is a, sounds like a great opportunity to use the, the web-based materials to open up all these topics to talk about the francophone world, have some examples, maybe some uh, expressions you could click on and see some updated expressions, and uh, maybe references to things like Verlan or whatever. And to Monsieur le Professeur, not to, I don't want to give you more work to do, but I think this is a wonderful opportunity today. We have everybody here. Maybe we can get uh, Mireille and Robert to do some sort of introductory, you know, 25 years later to introduce to the new language what their children are telling them, what their francophone friends are telling them. Just a few episodes. I don't mean for you to go back to Paris and do 52 more episodes, but maybe a few, a few episodes that can be on the website, that can be in the supplemental material to introduce some of these changes and updates. Thank you. Oh, we have a comment back here. Oh, yeah. I'm, as far as making changes to the video and to the textbook, this is an argument that can go back and forth constantly. Whenever you use something that is considered 
either a form of slang or just an expression or, you know, just something that people say that's not really standardized, you are always going to run into the problem of it either becoming outdated or falling into disuse or being interpreted differently by different people depending on their, their backgrounds. So as far as updating to newer expressions, it's really not going to solve the problem. As far as the online references for how someone would say it nowadays, yes, you can go online, watch videos, listen to the radio, but it's difficult really sometimes to find an explanation of what these newer expressions are, which being newer are not by default more vulgar, but ultimately it's a situation where so long as we're using non-standardized French, we're going to run into this problem. It's more, I think, isolating those expressions and just simply explaining what they mean, maybe with a side note simply saying that you may hear this expression differently, and possibly giving you know, uh, reference to online resources or other known resources where if they did hear an expression, they would be able to find the answer on what it could possibly mean. Um, I think that would probably be the easiest way rather than going through the expense of trying to change the video itself and trying to change the textbook itself. It's just one of those things where if it's just a figure of speech, then it can fall out of fashion or it can change. So updating it to a newer figure of speech is not going to fix that problem. One area, however, in which I think this, our students want new vocabulary is in the explosion of technology, and especially uh, uh, communications technology. They're all interested in how to say uh, a, a computer, uh, an iPod, a blog, and, and uh, if this could be somehow added, not, I, I know that it can't be added easily to a video, but it could certainly be added somewhere in the, in the written materials uh, so that quickly we would be able to start using that vocabula vocabulary in class without having them totally lost. There will be something that she says, or write, uh, at, in uh, 19, uh, uh, what was it, uh, 1990, uh, uh, an, another thing, 95, another thing, uh, five years later, you see, so we can have a series of uh, different expressions there, uh, which will be supposedly following the evolution. Comments here? Um, you have a great resource and all the teachers who've been teaching with French in Action and former students, Tim. And besides just putting out a survey and getting some answers and going back to the office, uh, you might put your technology to work to make a, a blog or a wiki and keep asking these questions and posing them to the community and get some answers. and you know, keep this forum going, not just for today, uh, next six months, and see what you can come up with also. So put the technology to work to help prepare these ideas. And That's use the resources, idea. not just go back and to make another survey on paper. I said of publishing a course preparation, for example, for all the uh, chapters? Like I'm sorry. I don't understand the question. Have you thought of publishing uh, someone's course preparation, like a, 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 an instructor who, who prepares uh, its classes every week, has like, a series of, uh, of, of course prepared? So have you thought of uh, publishing it? For example, as, because I, I'm following up on the question that uh, nowadays new instructors don't know how to teach it. So. Maybe there is an uh, Barry published the instructor's guide, but would it be possible to publish along the instructor guide, you know, course preparation, you know, exercises by exercise? What do you do in class, really? That's Not a good suggestion, idea. but someone, you know, who, I don't know. Okay. Could be inspiring. You could be like some master classes uh, published. Some of us have been successful. Classes. 
even having a, a resource of the videos of these little reenactments that students are doing in their classes. It was fun for us today just to see a sampling. And there could be a place on the website where people have given permission to have a sampling of their little mini videos because it's very inspiring. I would certainly, after seeing the ones today, be inspired to go back to class and say, gosh, let's, let's see what else we can make together. You know, it just makes them more excited about it. So there could be a resource of those materials too, instead of just hearing about them in the ACFEL newsletter or something like that. It's too buried. They keep the stuff active and animated and accessible together. I would just like to second the idea about giving more, working more with the teachers than with the material itself that I really find excellent. And as a young teacher myself, I had trouble figuring it out on my own. I mean, I wasn't on my own. I was reading the guide and the, and the study guide. But I would think if you really want to give French in Action an extra push, it would be more focusing on the teacher as, as the, the medium and not the medium itself, not technology, but I think there's a way, I mean, I speak for myself, it took me time to understand like how to make, use it to the fullest and cover, uh, make this bridge between uh, now and my students' difficulties and, and what I would like them to, to use. And when we work with the teachers more, I think this would solve all the most of all the criticism you might be hearing. I don't think it's in the method. Thank you. I don't know if one exists yet, but maybe we can have a Facebook page for French in Action teachers. We can all join and we can, you know, for after today. Is there anyone that wants to volunteer to do that or? <laughs> I could set it up. Can you set that up? Sure. Okay. And you have all our emails, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can email us and then we can join on Facebook and we can share our comments and ideas and post videos, post the videos on Facebook. You know? Sure. Other ideas or comments about uh, uh, not just uh, continuing uh, you know, the success of French in Action, but taking it into the, uh, into the 21st century, proselytizing a bit. How do we convince uh, other teachers to do what we have been doing? Um, to, to sort of share that joy uh, in teaching that uh, you know, we found works so well with our students. Um, but just a little anecdote here about my uh, own particular uh, great state of New Jersey, um, uh, Bergen County, uh, not, not a poor county by any stretch of the imagination, just replaced their middle school Spanish teachers with Rosetta Stone. Uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, you know, we're, it's not just uh, an academic exercise uh, that, that we're discussing here, but it's really about the vitality of language teaching. So, uh, you know, your ideas for how to how to not just maintain the current situation, but also to spread it and expand it would be would be most welcome. There was um, there was a, a, an earlier comment about the uh, about the replacement of the video that you had seen in the in the interactive version. What you saw there was technology which dates you know, five or six years ago, and, and uh, an interactive version of French in Action would, would indicate the, the three things that you saw. First, it would, uh, it would have uh, segmented playback, something where you could repeat over and over again. You saw when the word merci was clicked on that there was the, uh, the parti pédagogique would no longer be uh, different from the video, but something accessible at any moment, which is what we do on our uh, presentation of teaching. And then we saw a bit at the end of uh, a, an interactive speaking exercise where we replaced Mireille in the dialogue, which could be done for, for any other character. So if you have ideas about how technology might be used as well, as I mentioned for our panel on teaching, uh, almost uh, every individual, in fact every individual up there has been uh, aggressively engaged in how to bring uh, the computer technology uh, into their teaching of French. So if you have ideas on that as well, uh, we'd love to hear them. When John was up talking about the uh, French interaction, he did say there was going to be a iPad version, right? Is that right, John? 
it will work on iPad. And I think that's something, you know, my school just bought iPads for the uh, eighth grade class. And there's nothing, I was looking, there's really nothing in French right now that's worth buying. You know, in French interaction, that would be fantastic uh, to see something like that on an iPad. So they bought iPads, but not Rosetta Stone yet. We're, we're still okay. Well, one of, the, one of the big differences between Rosetta Stone and French in Action as is, or any future French in Action, is the, the lack of cultural, uh, culturally authentic images. It's the same red balloon in, in French as it is in Chinese, as it is in Spanish. Um, so uh, so in, the, in the parties pédagogiques, which are taken directly from uh, television and film, it's culturally authentic material. And that could only be swapped out, if swapped out, with uh, culturally authentic images and videos as well. I mean, that's just... Uh, Terribly important. You know, une bouteille is not a bouteille is not a bouteille. They they look different. If you're if you're in Italy, if you're in France, what part of France are you in, etc. Not that this is what we should be teaching high school students, but any other comments, questions, concerns? Yes. Uh, Carol Heron speaking again. Um, there are some changes, though, in the new materials because you don't want to get people excited about getting a new edition and they say, oh, they just changed the cover or something. So, uh, and, and, I, and I know you're going to make uh, changes and I think the um, uh, Marie-Laure sounds like a wonderful idea um, and, and bringing um, more things on a, on a, perhaps on a website that was active. Um, redoing the tests. I was going to ask you, was there any um, thought about doing, redoing the test banks? Um, have, have you been thinking about that, or is that not in your plan? I was actually thinking about that, and I was going to ask you. Um, I was wondering how many people use the test bank, or if they don't even know it exists, how many would think they would really benefit from it, because we can send it to you. But yeah, we can definitely, we should and will redo the test bank. Yeah, I think that would make a wonderful um, um, new change, and I don't know how long that would take, but I think that's something that should be included in a new edition. Um, I know at our school uh, we used French in Action until uh, four or five years ago. Um, I used it when I was in high school. And we loved the test bank. We tended to cut and paste um, different exercises. So we found them very, very useful, but not necessarily, you know, all together. <laughs> like the idea of it. Um, one thing that when we, use, when we would use the workbook, um, sometimes we found uh, that exercises were simply too long. <laughs> um, we would assign an exercise, students would open the workbook up, ah, this is too long, and not even start it. Um, I think one thing that unfortunately students have adapted to is a shorter attention span. <laughs> um, and it's not, and I, I agree with you about the, about the Kia, um, it's not that you have to make it shiny, it's still the same thing, you still have to do the work, but, um, but keeping them a little bit more engaged by moving from one acti activity to the next, uh, I think would be, might be a good adaptation for a new edition. Yeah, Carol made a comment a couple of minutes ago about, um, you know, will there be, what kind of changes will there be? and I talked a little bit about them. Um, we're not the kind of publisher like many other, we're not a major publisher like many of the major publishers where you know, they're, they're churning out new editions of books every two or three years and their sole reason, in my opinion, is to fight the used book market. And um, so they're just making very modest changes. It's kind of a big deal for us to do a new edition, especially if something like French in Action. So if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do a significant um, significantly new edition. The issue, of course, is the tug of war between the video, which is the core of the course and which is so sacred and so perfect as it is, and how do we work around it by just improving the parts that, that should be improved?
Yeah, I think you know, one one thing you can add, you know, you know, of course, is the euro, the Velib. You know, there's extra, there's things that have come along. I think it would be neat, echoing what this gentleman said over here was, since we have Robert and Ray still, you know, and seeing them today just was so exciting. Um, you know, if if there was an extra chapter maybe of them, you know, and if there if there's one thing that can be maybe added and they can kind of reminisce and you can maybe use them to bring in the stuff that's happened in the last 25 years, some of the changes maybe through them, even, you know, you know without, I understand it's not touching the video, you know, it is a jewel and it's a work of art that should be left alone. But if you add maybe, like on DVDs, how you have that extra video that you had of, you know, extras and have maybe them now today, I think that could be a big selling point too for people. Because my students are always asking, what do they look like today? You know, and that would be great on the new edition to have just one extra little episode of them. You know, maybe we can maybe Mr. Capress can use his imagination, you know, to come up with some little story of what they've been doing the last 25 years. You know, after they were in the south of France, you know, they got married, had kids, and what happened? You know. <laughs> we'll have to ask them at the, uh, the drinks this evening. Other questions, comments? A really quick one, good. Is there a target date for a new, did you say this already? Is there a target date? I didn't say it already. No, um, we're expecting to have uh, the books ready for the fall of 2012. So they'll go into production next spring or summer, and then they'd be ready the following spring of 2012 for course use in fall 2012. I think we're just about set. I just want to make, say one more thing before I let you go. We're going to have an hour and a half to relax before the start of the cocktail hour at 6.30 at, at uh, Commons. If anybody doesn't know how to get to Commons, you can see me or Ash or Brian, and we can give you directions. But while I have you all here, I just wanted to say, um, just talking to you as French uh, scholars and teachers, not as necessarily as French in action users, but I'm interested in acquiring um, language textbooks in general. So if you are working on something, if you see a gap that's in the, your curricula where there aren't any good books or instructional materials meeting it and you want to see something developed, um, just come see me tonight, email me, whatever, and we'll just talk about maybe what you're working on or what one of your colleagues is working on or anything like that. So just throwing that out there to you. So it's over for the day and we'll see you at the cocktail hour. Thank you.